Dire Team Ban. Radiant Team Pick. Dire Team Pick. Dire team pick. Necrophos. Spirit breaker. Dire team ban. Enchantress. All right, everyone, and welcome back. Radiant this Team is Bat. Team Leviathan versus Blue Pikachu. Um, the game literally started 10 seconds ago, and they just ban, ban, pick, pick, ban, ban. Hubbard, what do you think? Dire Team Radiant Bat. Team Ban. Had Halbert muted on TeamSpeak. Let me start off again, guys. This is Team Leviathan versus Blue Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> the game started like very, 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 like 10 seconds, 20 seconds ago. And both the teams just insta-picked and insta-banned. Extremely fast start. Halbert, what do you think? Uh, well, Sunny both decide to know what they want. Um, it's pretty interesting. We, we're already seeing another Spirit Breaker coming out as well. So it's, this has been quite a loved hero so far this in these last two matches that we've seen or last two series that we've seen um also you know i, th I think like you know the likes of night Sorka, also very well remaining well very commonly picked up here as well i don't think there's many surprises in the draft as well seconds remaining other than i think the witch doctor is an Dyer interesting King. one it, it's uh, essentially four. something that blue picks you like but yeah definitely just flying through the picks so far um, um for example bsj being a Twitch chat fan favorite, um, good or bad. So this is going to be very interesting. I do see a lot of love for both of these two teams, for Blue Pikachu as well as for Team Leviathan. Five seconds. No Spirit Breaker. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. No, never mind. The Spirit Breaker was actually picked up during the first phase. There is still a Earthshaker here, though, if they actually want to pick him up. But it just seems like both of these two teams, they're going in for a pocket strat. They know exactly what they want to do. They're just picking, they're banning. Night Stalker, this is the first time Night Stalker has been actually first phase banned uh, today so far. So it did leave the Necro in, it did leave the Spirit remaining. Breaker in. Both of those heroes being picked up by Blue Pikachu, but Jakira and Chantra's faceless void. Remaining. Are we going to see a Death Prophet so far? Every time there's either been a Death Prophet pick or ban whenever there's a faceless void. Yeah, also, I, I'm just on, on the side of Blue Pikachu as well. I'm, I'm curious to see where they're getting their physical damage from. At the moment, they don't really have it. And they do have a nice aura from Beastmaster. So it'll be interesting to see what their last pickup here is. Um, but also pretty interesting with the, with the Enchantress pickup as well, with the Face of Void. So a lot of creation coming in. And the thing I like about the Enchantress as well is that it is a hero that has a lot of range later on. So even if it's running the more sporty kind of role, which I would expect will be a kind of a greedy four or something, um, the the fact remains that she'll be able to deal quite a bit of damage into those chronospheres and obviously you know Jakira and Face Void is really one of those like super old school combinations where you just get that you know huge amount of damage out from Dying the max pie, which actually does hurt quite a bit over time. If you if it's try try standing it for a while you'll see what happens. Well we saw what happened in the previous game. The Jakira just I mean I've always liked a Jakira, but I don't think this is gonna be a pause three Jakira, but still Jakira with a faceless void, Macropire, Ice Path, Enchantress hitting from outside the Chrono as well. There's actually damage this time that can be done within the Chrono. Remaining. Yeah, I mean, obviously for those of you who didn't watch the previous series, which would have been a calamity remaining. since it was, of course, Why? Complexity versus EG. Basically, yeah. I, I, I won't spoil it, you know, uh, but the thing is, I, we, I think we, we agreed very early on that there just wasn't enough damage output coming out from... from well, I guess it gives away one of the sides <laughs> um, to, to really do... do a, do the, the combination justice. But in this case, as you mentioned, you know, you have a lot of damage coming from Jack, the, the Jakira and Smackpire. Uh, Enchantress as well, just being able to turn the sidelines. And, you know, even Tusk, although, you know, it, it's it's a hero that it can give, cons not, I wouldn't say consistent damage, but like a little bit of burst damage. It's not particularly huge, like the likes of a lean or a lion or something like that. It's still just a hero that does like notable damage, is probably the best way to describe it. Yeah. So th there's a lot going into this one. And, 
As for blue Pikachu as well, like don't, don't write their, their lineup off at all. I really do think if they get themselves a nice, um, a nice beefy right clicker. Um, to be honest, this is just a, this is just a push and a burst damage. Beastmaster roar into Necro, into Pugna blast, into Necrofoss. They just want to kill you and push a tower, kill you and push a tower. However, mm. with the Jakira and the Enchantress, there's counter push there as well, but there's more team fights. So a more overall draft coming from Leviathan and BSJ's team. The problem I see here though is. From the side of blue, of you know, blue Pikachu itself, it. I don't see the synergy here. You have a Spirit Breaker that can gank. What other hero do you have that can actually just jump like across the map, that can gank very well with it? You do have the Beastmaster with the blink in. Radiant team. I don't know. I'm just. I'm not. I'm not completely sold on the side of blue Pikachu. However, the same thing goes for Leviathan. They need a mid hero that can actually match up with the Faceless Void. Well, as you mentioned, the DP is still in the pool, so certainly something that, that they can consider. Uh, I also want to point out as well, though, just before moving too far off the blue picture draft, is that they do have a significant remaining. problem in the sense that they rely quite heavily on their Beastmaster's Raw to, to ensure a kill. But yeah, well, there's, there's oh, a DPM. Surprise, so surprise. The, the problem is that Tusk is great against that kind of uh, behavior, because if, if he gets himself up a Blink Dagger, he can literally just jump in, snowball, keep... That, that hero alive and actually go on the offensive yeah. afterwards and there is enough follow-up from the likes of the festival you can join into that fight or potentially if he is the Ten target just turn around and chronos your team afterwards so th there's a lot going on from them that's right at the Five moment and blue picture you read and you pick up something here that just brings us all together something for the spirit breaker to, to gang into something that that can deal the physical damage that they're currently lacking and what's going to be blue you need lockdown and they don't have it they only have one single target locked down. Sure, Spirit Breaker can sort of fall in that role, but it's a problem, especially up against... If I look at the two teams right now, I see a control team, which is Leviathan. They have Chrono, they have Jakiro Ice Path, they have Tusk, they can split up, and I see team fight from, Levi um, you know, from Leviathan as well, as well as push. So control team fight and push versus Blue Pikachu's burst and instant pickoff and push. I would prefer the lineup from Leviathan here. It just scales better and works together a lot better. However, Blue Pikachu can be active a lot earlier than Leviathan. As soon as the roar is up, Pugna can Ten put a lot of damage remaining. onto towers early on. Beastmaster can put a lot of damage onto towers early on. As soon Five as Silencer hits six, remaining. he can stop anything from Leviathan. So can Blue Pikachu actually get ahead or far enough ahead to stop Leviathan from coming back? We saw in the EG versus Cole game, um, you know, versus Complexity game, EG had the better well-rounded draft, but Complexity just were relentless. They never left, oh, you know, they never let off. They never took their foot off the gas pedal. And that's what Blue Pikachu has to do here. I've got to say as well that, like, you know, often I try to look at these kind of drafts that don't quite get, that don't seem obvious. You know, you look at them and you see, like, okay, there's a Pugna, maybe there's a chance that there's something pushy about this draft. Um, but... I, I tend to agree with you. It's also a case where I feel that Leviathan have a drop that's far easier to execute. You know, it makes perfect sense. You go in with the Chronosphere, you have a DP on the back line, doing a lot of damage, and Chantress also just like wailing. Man for the task. It, it just all fits together very nicely. Um, Blue Pikachu may, ha they may know something we don't though, right? There may be some synergy here that we're not seeing just yet, something that they're planning to operate in a particular way. Uh, the, the one obvious thing is that, you know, you do have a huge amount of pickup potential with the, the Beastmaster as well as Necrofoss. I mean, if you can get a core hero down just by, you know, getting that roar out, waiting on them a little bit and using the Necrofoss ulti, it's obviously a really great way to start a fight. And if it is the likes of the DP, who will be quite significant in a team fight, um, potentially even catching her with her ultimate up and just, the, you know, encouraging that huge cooldown, you could find yourself in a good position. So it's not like they don't have something that works. It just feels that there's a lot more pressure on them to perform well than Leviathan do. I, I would honestly say if these two sides played exactly as well as the other, that Leviathan comes off the win just on the merit yeah. of having the, the team fight that does more and that still has arguably better pushing power anyways. I do it. I do agree. Keep in mind, this is the lower bracket, if I'm not mistaken. Let me... This is the lower bracket, of course, of the North America's qualifier. And whoever loses here drops down. And I mean, or, or not drops down, drops out. And both of these two teams, they're fighting for the survival. And if I'm not mistaken, 
Whoever wins here will be playing up against VG Gaming Junior, uh, VG J Storm, or they'll be playing up against EG. And because that all sounds fun, right? I wouldn't want to play any of those two teams, <laughs> to be honest. That I mean, is, I, if I'm looking at. Well, I mean, look. Which I, I've been known to this... read things completely wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I think that any side that has to go up against an angry EG is going to have a really hard time. Uh, Complexity managing to beat them was something pretty impressive. I think Complexity played well. I think EG probably didn't play as well as they could. But, you know, come back onto this game, you always want to keep your chances alive. I mean, Complexity showed that, you know, any team can beat any team, really, on the, on the right day. So, uh, you know, perhaps this is a case where either these sides go and do something pretty magical. And as you mentioned, I mean, we have Leviathan, who was a direct invite, and you have uh, Blue Pikachu, which is a fan favorite. So. Both these sides have a lot to play for. They've, at the very least, they get to play for uh, s some new fans. So was Leviathan a direct invite to the Invitational? I believe so. I don't but know. In fact, I'm just invite. here to shout they, and make people's ears bleed. They were. In fact, it, but Blue Big Chew uh, alongside Immortals with the open qualifier winners. So, um, no. I'm not surprised about Immortals, though. I mean, Immortals, uh, old MVP Phoenix. I uh, was casting them yesterday. <laughs> to be honest, they just played so well. I really, really enjoy watching them play. Uh, unfortunately, they lost, but it's such entertaining Dota. Oh yeah, I mean, and that's probably one of the great things about Dota if I ever get moment, asked right? to even cast their scrims, I'll say yes. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I, I think that's one of the great things about Dota at the moment, though, as well, is that you know, with this large pool of heroes that we're currently seeing being picked up and additionally with just the playstyles being quite varying, you know, you know I, I don't feel like we have a case anymore where you know, if you think like the Brat Dota stage or when you have the Death Ball push, you have a lot of different styles of play that can be used and ooh, you try actually find himself in a pretty interesting position here. We're gonna scout out the smoke. It's like uh Blue Pikachu aren't too keen to do hustle too much, but they know exactly what's going on. They're just well, not sure how much. There's a spirit there. breaker here, he runs straight in and now it's gonna be the first tussle coming through. There's a little bit of Curse, Arcane Curse coming through here, just damaging the side of Leviathan. They're just... I mean, who has actually the level 1 kill potential here? Um, you know, I, I, I just know. don't feel like there's... I mean, technically speaking, I think if the Beastmaster was there with his with his boars, that would probably give them a bit of a, a fighting chance, but really... Level I, 1 boar? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's not great, right? Um, but so, so I'd probably give it to Leviathan, and since we are not there anyways, like, there's not a huge amount of like, Hopefully that they, I don't know, they charge everyone, and then they all wait for charge to recharge, and then yeah. charges again. I think and if the Pugna was there, definitely, they would, you know, Netherbrass does a lot of damage, and it's only a 5 second cooldown. In an early fight like this, you might be able to get off 3 Netherbrass as well. But good, good blocks coming in here from 8D, so if, if the names are incorrect, unfortunately, they're not the same as what I have here on my stats. So I'm just going to call them by the names that they are. Sammy Boy and AD. There you go. Why not? Let's go for it. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is also quite an interesting possibility we have between the DPP and the Pugna. For exactly the reason you see why. Pugna does a lot of damage, but the... The Soul Drain is, of course, uh, very, very handy on the DP as well. And she, excuse me, uh, Spirit Siphon, and then she eventually gets to the point where she can also just deal quite a bit of nuke damage herself. Top lane, though, is she uh, going for, taking quite a bit of damage, actually. Save, happy to shout some punishment, but... And there's yeah. the Hadouken going through. Save is in a bit of trouble, but Whiskey, he does get the save up onto save right now. New Shy is also being got on by Alren and the First Blood. Jenkins! Can someone say Leroy Jenkins coming through? Whiskey might actually be able to... Well, Whiskey is going to drop in this one as well. One more hit either. Jenkins gets the second kill. And, well, he has to run away. He might actually die from this. But good body blocks coming up here from his satire. And he turns around. No, he wants to go in for more. Saves in a... Save has to be careful. And the thing about this, right, is that a set of mental is a monster this early on. It is... Just a monster. I mean, that, that thing is dealing 160 damage, right? Now, comparatively, if you think about most level 1 spells, I think Pugna is probably a little bit higher, but uh, if you take a look at it, uh, he only deals 100 damage. Pugna only does 100 spell. damage, yeah. Yeah, and, and level 2 is 175. So, the, the point is that this thing hurts a lot, and it's actually quite tanky, so it just gets in your face Ooh. and murders you. So, Enchantress uh, is abusing that very early on. I really enjoy offlane Enchantresses, especially up against lineups when the, you know where there aren't any lockdown or there's hardly any lockdown or control 
sure there's quite a bit of range spam coming through here from Save as well as Whiskey, but without guaranteed lockdown the whole time, Enchantress is actually going to get a lot of farm, and she's going to put a lot of pressure onto the side here of Blue Pikachu. Yeah, he picked up a two-minute phase boost, right? I mean, that, obviously that also helps you start it out with, with the brown boots. But that is a lot of damage very early on. It, it just hurts a lot. And you often talk about phase between the main I'm going to see a kill boost. here onto Alrin. There's the stomp coming through here. And unfortunately, they will not wait. Okay, that was a bit of a delayed eye shot coming through on my end. Seems like there's a bit of lag. Sorry about that one. Unfortunate. But yeah, the... the um, Probably the Wilding Ripper, but it's nice to have a lane because it does have a nice aura for you. Um, probably not, he probably would have taken a, a Sapper to a mentor over it again because uh, it's, it's still just that strong. And, and the bullying is just awful at this point. I mean, uh, Jenkins is almost level 4, and uh, Whiskey is not even level 3 yet. I think someone should start a Reddit thread um, pointing at Gaben and say, Stop in game bullying. Just because of Jenkins coming here right now. And is this going to be another? Oh, unfortunately, not another creep kill. That would have been the seventh of the past two days. But getting another kill here. 3 0 up for Leviathan. I mean, this Enchantress is going to hit level six quickly. She's going to be doing a lot of damage. Look at Whiskey right now as well. This is going to be a carry Enchantress. And I actually don't want to look at the net worth just yet. But having a look at that, she's. Pretty much even with the bottom lane free farming Jakiro, after oh, Jakiro, um, free farming BSJ up on the face of the void. Yeah, well, here's the other thing as well, it's just taking a look at the golden minute, 331. Oh, Death Prophet might be in a bit of trouble. There's a three man rotation coming through here. Leviathan, they actually want to try and kill the Death Prophet, but Yushai coming through, getting good shards off, pushing out the rest of BP, and Blue Pikachu will have to back off. That was a very, how can I say, not costly engagement there from Blue Pikachu, but Focusing three heroes on mid, not getting a kill, and keeping them on, you know, here on this middle lane is going to leech XP here from the Pugna. Sure, they're moving away, but Sammy Boy, I think he'll be okay with that. Sitting on level five, he didn't die. Uh, five minutes is going to be up soon. He'll be able to hit the shrine. He'll be able to get back up to full HP. And the side of Blue Pikachu struggling a bit in regards with experience. Yeah, still coming in once again. Going to catch up onto this book in the middle lane and immediately starts teeping away. So he shouldn't be able to walk this one off and does manage to do so. But look at top lane. Are you kidding me? Okay. Nice work there by Whiskey. Just Jenkins is still charged a little bit longer. He's still great for this. But that's it. Gotcha. I'm, okay. this is a I'm going to focus problem. on Jenkins the entire game. How about that? Just, just put fair perspective on it. I think we'll be okay. The thing is, as well, is that. But what is he going to do at this point? Like, actually, might die. No, it's, it's on the right side of the ice shots. But what I want to point out before we get too distracted by the fact that this is now no longer defense of the ancients, but it's rather kill Jenkins, stop him from killing us. But the thing is, when you when you're under so much pressure in your safe lane and you make a mid lane rotation with three heroes, you're sacrificing so much space and time trying to find something, trying to find an in, trying to get an advantage somewhere on 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 the map. And you but left when, top when that, lane and then top lane. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you make the sacrifice and you don't get a kill, and what makes things worse is in the, the ruin goes the way of, I, I believe it was the, the Tusk who actually picked Hold on quickly, there's a charge here straight onto the Jakiro right now. Another bash as well. This might be the first death for the side of Leviathan, but they are going to get a trade off. Beastmaster does drop. However, save is here, turning onto BSJ. BSJ gets a Chronosphere up, and that was a bit of a lag once again on my end, but he. You guys at least saw that kill happening. BSJ wants to push up for more. Unfortunately, no bashes. Two for one. A two for up for the side of Leviathan. And top lane. Really Hold on. That, right? Whiskey might be in a bit of trouble. He gets netted up. Jenkins wants to go for the kill. Jenkins is dominating. And he just heals himself up. He's going to turn around. He, he's not level six just yet. Very close. Leviathan. Um, yeah, they are just playing extremely well. Yeah. I mean... There's just so much pressure, and the problem once again, we were literally explaining why rotations that don't pay off are bad when you're in this situation, and then you literally, I wouldn't say feed the faces for you, you did have to use this chronosphere, but you know, he, he gets the better of the exchange, uh, le less players commit to the, the fight, and you know, you get the two kills going on to that call, so, right now, if you're a Leviathan fan, life's pretty good. A charge coming down here onto the Death Prophet. Death Prophet being drained up quite a bit here by Pugna, but maybe they should have waited for the charge to actually hit before they engage. And this is going to be the first tier one tower falling on the top lane. Jenkins will be getting it. The push potential coming through here from Leviathan is big, and they smoke up instantly. 
There is a level six here on the Enchantress, and they want to go for more. Nature well, they want to go for a couple us. of kills here. Yeah, he is free. He has been shackled to that lane due to that tower. The tower is no longer there. Now he is left to send his reign of terror on the rest of the map, yep. and he's going to do he that straight off the He also has the siege that he picked up, and there you go. They want to go on to AP oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Half HP just from one attack from Enchantress. I think he did get tagged by the Astral though, so it was... I'm oh, sorry, the Eye Shard. So it wasn't just the, the, the Impetus, but... I'm getting a bit of spell hurting. delay or spell lag coming through here, so... We'll forgive you, don't worry. You have to be my eyes and ears. However, bottom lane, there is an engagement as Eye Shard's coming through. It does trap off the Spirit Breaker, and now here comes the Jakira. does manage to get off a good dual breath and they want to turn around they want to actually go for the kill onto the beast master b bsj has to be a bit careful is there any roar is there any kind of disable to try and kill him unfortunately not beast master though he is still taking tanking a bit of damage and he might actually drop from this oh one I'll, more tick one I'll more tick survive. oh 14 hp oh jenkins jenkins wants to go in for a kill but he's being charged, he's being scouted out. This might actually turn out very well for the side of Blue Pikachu. And oh, he decides to run away. He only has one level up, oh no, three levels up in the um, untouchable. And look at how slow everyone attacks. Does he just live here? I think he just lives here. He lives. He, he has the infused raindrop as well, so that a little bit of magic damage they did have to do. No, okay. There's a charge, and unfortunately, this is going to be his death. The pug knows there, and oh, charge coming here. Not going to do much. He is snowballing in, but up against four heroes. What? You shy? I think um, he thought he was going to die. Why did he turn? Okay, that's quite interesting. But they are going to at least get the kill onto the Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker does charge. He is trying to at least do what he can. BSJ catches two heroes, knowing he has to focus on the one. And there's the roar coming through as well onto the Death Prophet. Death Prophet does not have his ultimate up or her ultimate up just yet. They still, however, manage to pick off two heroes. And good ulti coming to you from BSJ, building up straight into that LinkedIn Sphere. And he'll have like a 13, well, okay, let's have a look at this. 10 minutes, he'll probably have like a 15 minute LinkedIn Sphere, as well as Treads and Aquila and PMS. Yeah, the, the top three in the game at the moment are the cores from the Vibe. And it's the Holy Grail, right? You want your cores to be well, their cores, and then you're happy. But it's it's really, a, it's, it's the, the Royal Flush, if you would, because you do also have your Tusk as well as your Jakiro, Hit of the Silencer, and the Spirit Breaker. So right now, they're in a bit happy. There's a charge coming through right now. Are they actually going to commit? Yeah, Aura's actually jumping straight in. There's the Macro Pie being dropped up here by the Jakiro. The Curse is onto two of them as well. Jenkins, is he actually going to be able to do anything? He gets slowed up here by the Pugna, and unfortunately, he can't actually attack anyone. But here comes the Death Prophet. Death Prophet does have her ultimate this time, and PSJ is coming forward. The manages to get a good lockdown. Save! It just gets destroyed. Jenkins getting a double kill. He wants to go for more. The long range attacks, that's going to be a triple kill. Is this going to be an ultra? No, he decides to just back off. Um, uh, Jake? Well, oh, okay, wait. Yeah, Necro actually runs in. I'm not quite sure about this. Using his ultimate onto the Death Prophet, not actually going to do anything because Death Prophet is just going to heal up co completely in a couple of seconds. One thing I want to point out before I forget Enchantress did not go for a Dragon Launch, just went first item Hood of Defiance, and they cannot kill her. Oh, really oh please, charge man. coming through. I mean, this is MVP Phoenix kind of Dota. Just constant action all over the place. And Auron running into four heroes, five heroes by himself. BZJ is on a killing spree. The roar is coming through onto the Death Prophet. Death Prophet will actually drop from this. But will we be able to get any kind of turnaround kills here? Enchantress does not have any mana for her ulties at all. She, no, BSJ actually got a double kill from that. The silent, the global silence is there. He pays with it for his life, or, you know, with his life. And Enchantress runs away, is being charged up, but all the way from base, I think Enchantress should be okay. Enchantress needs mana though. <laughs> I don't know oh, if Enchantress is going to be okay Enchantress is going to die from this, being really beat crept up right now. AD wants to go in, and there is the stun from Auron. Auron trying to body block, but look at this slow. One thing, if you're up against an Enchantress, don't just like keep on spamming right click, because every click that you do actually procs it. So if you spam like 10 right clicks, on your first right click, you're gonna hit a slow as the as the spray breaker did there. Was it's just ridiculous. So, Dyer's top tower is under yeah. interesting thing. Give us some analysis, so, so oh, people, yeah, please. Yeah, right. stop so, it's such a slow game. It's such a slow game of Dota. Um, <coughs> Cap up. <laughs> but it was pretty interesting, right? Because that that is a very aggressive play from Aaron. He, he charged in very deep. He actually went past 
two heroes deep in to start the fight off. But he actually paid off quite nicely in the end because they, they actually got a couple kills on the back. Now, they are far behind, right? They're, they're sitting at 7.5. Well, behind. There's a Chronosphere, and it, this time it actually traps Enchantress, making sure Enchantress doesn't get the kill. Neely actually got it on that last hit, and you can continue on talking right now. But you might actually see further engagement, so hold that thought. You can tell me what's going on in a little bit. Death Prophet does have ultimate if she wants to use it, but of course she does have a Spirit Siphon as well as a Silence. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. She just gets destroyed. Backup is there for Nusha. Unfortunately, Nusha is alone. No one else is actually there to help him out, and he's going to drop... Well, Jenkins is actually there. Sorry, I didn't even see Jenkins. The lags and the... Not quite sure what's happening with that. Lags are... Maybe I should quickly try and reconnect. I don't know. Sure. I mean, so... Here's the thing, right? You're so far behind at this point, like when, when you're sitting at, because they were close to 7.5k behind, right? And what a lot of teams will do when they find themselves in this position is they'll just completely back off. Be like, well, let's try and play for the later period of the game, try to farm ourselves back in. But what they've actually done is they've, they've, they've opted to go for a rubber band mechanic, right? So we got lower respawn times than you, and we don't really care about our ulties too much. We can just fight. And that's what they did, and it paid off to a degree because they, they did, in fact, manage to pick up. Uh, a, a couple of kills there that that brought them back 2.5k and that's pretty much better than anything else they could have done at that stage it could have possibly lost in the game as well but at the very least in this case it worked out for them and i'm sure with a name like blue pikachu it's understandable why people would want to get behind them and see them do well so uh, let's hope that this uh, makes things entertaining we don't have too much of a, of a stomp that the game potentially looked like it would be at one stage but over on uh, the jakiro he's uh in a little bit of trouble here as you all get the ice path out onto 8D. Starts uh, taking a bit of a pounding here from BSJ on this face void and that should be enough to finish off the kill and is Blue Pikachu just not able to capitalize on anything there. Now that's a Jakiro pretty far out. That is in fact obviously just the support Jakiro just running with the transfer boots and it is it's definitely an issue where there isn't quite enough damage to really hurt the side of uh, Leviathan right now. Uh, it's a, and that's an obviously pretty huge one, especially when you're running something like Reaper's Scythe. If, if you can't get somebody low quickly and capitalize off that ultimate, it takes a lot away from the arsenal of uh, ne Necrophos. I mean, simple stuff, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's as true as any other information. But towards the middle lane, we do have, once again, the vibe in the front foot. We're going to get an Elrond, and the damage coming out from this... Bambi is crazy. Jenkins is just breaking things. Walks in for a second. They will manage to get the final roll onto the base boy. They're going to drop the silence as well, trying to keep him down. And they will pick up that kill though. Still moving forward, safe, trying to help out his friend. They're going to get the tusk snowball by themselves all the time as they go back into the whiskey. Magnify comes through the sidelines. Really good ice path. The ice shots help out as well, bringing back Nick Foss into the fight. They will manage to bring down the tusk though as whiskey tries to back off. They're by the shine. Whiskey still. Keen to fight straight into it here as Sammy Boy does get off two life siphons, spiritual siphons, doing quite a bit of damage here, but will be bailed out by Ice Path coming in from the Jakiro. Master Kinshira, though, in a lot of trouble here, will be brought down. Going to pick up another one potentially as Elrin locks onto his target, and that is a huge team fight actually for the side of Blue Picture. Once again, Rubber Band Mechanic is going to do them a lot of favors. Radiant Just taking a look at that swing, it is in fact a 2000 gold swing, and <laughs> do you know? So it is a crazy game, and when it goes real crazy, anything can happen. So, Blue Pikachu keeping their hopes alive. They're in fact reduced the deficit to about 3k at the moment, which means, of course, that they're they're looking even healthier. Ritz, I think uh, we might still have a game on our hands. Save, just gonna shrine up here. He's heading towards the four staff, so does actually have it, just waiting for the courier to make its rounds. Elrond has been very active, probably not uh, as, I, I would say, well, not the start you would have wanted uh, by, by any means, but at the same time he has uh, he has been involved in more fights, getting, getting some work done, and he is also wanting to flush, so you can see all, all these players have actually picked up quite a bit. Uh, as for the next first, Whiskey is moving back. Sorry about that one guys, seems like the my internet uh, just had to quickly restart my router. Everything should be back up now. Halbert, what happened? Well, a lot of fighting happened, Ritz. Okay. So um, I'm getting a bit of lag on your audio. Let's quickly see. Well, I'll, I'll just keep going for the meanwhile. So towards the middle lane.
push is being slotted up by Leviathan. They've lost a little bit of momentum. You can see that if you look at the net worth, a lot of the players from the side of the Sorry about that one, guys. We should be back shortly. It seems like the game is fine, but, but Team Speak is lagging still, out just this, a this little bit. Pretty Maybe significant advantage in 17 minutes of 2k. I mean, it's, it's nothing huge, so nothing I'll scary. People should really be coming back here. in a big way. I think Leviathan may be just. Struggling to keep up with the pace to some degree. I mean, they, they have the advantages, but they do also have really long cooldowns on the LTs, and I think Blue Pikachu, realizing this, did in fact manage to get quite a bit out of the deal in the end. Now, uh, Sammy Boy and friends do commit down to this tier 2 tower in the middle lane, and toss through an eye shot as well, trying to get some something to work with, something to pick a fight here. And then it'll be uh, a pretty simple tier 2 in the end. I guess with most of the LTs up at this point, just missing the Jakiro, which probably isn't the most significant of all the lot. I'm pretty happy just to uh, let that one pass and see if they can get another good sperm But now they are in fact going to use the DP ultimate here as they go on to Roshan. You can see a charge, they might know this is happening, but we are too keen to take this fight, especially into this position where you have a exorcism going up, you still have the Chrono Spear available, you don't have the same kind of fight. Sure, you do have that global silence, but taking that position from your face, so the bottom lane will see applying some pressure here on the tier tower, looking for the trade that they can get, it's a pretty reasonable one. That's great here, welcome back, and goodbye to tier 2 tower. And goodbye tier 2 tower on bottom lane. Okay guys, so it seems like we might have missed a little bit, take us quickly through what... Right, well, I mean, just assuming that, that since you started, you, well, at the point you had your, your issues that uh, we missed out on that, I uh, basically just feel like the blue picture have been trying to use the timing window um, that Leviathan has on the heroes. They obviously have two really low or long cooldown options in the form of Death Rock and the face Void, so they tend to be fighting alongside that. But I think before that, we're probably going to see another fight here as the smoke breaks out and the blue picture want to get on the offensive and they're going to find a fight. But they like them. Oh, let's have a look here though. Jumping straight in onto the Enchantress as well. And on the back line though, Death Prophet is in a bit of trouble, but she does manage to actually get out the. PSJ did manage to get a good corner straight off. I missed a bit of that part coming through. It just seems like it's a one for one standard trade off right now. There was no global silence cost. So this is just giving Leviathan everything they need. And Ulrich is just going to take another Jenkins smack to the head. He's still alive. He will decide to charge out and actually get out of this one. Is it going to be one right click? No, it's not. But still a three for one trade off. I guess we call it the great escape. But yeah, so Blue uh, Pikachu are, are is trying. It, is it really that time of the day? It, it is. It is, in fact, that time <laughs> of the day. Those are my the, jokes. You know, Riddits, I did not expect that from you. I learned the best dad jokes from the best dad joker of them all. So I'm not a dad yet, but I'm but I'm preparing to be. I guess going to practice on on live stream for thousands of spectators. Okay, that friends. is just keep the stream PG. Keep the stream PG, and please don't practice being a dad on me. I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't know how you respond to that in, in this kind of environment. But uh, yeah, so uh, Blue Picture obviously just trying to play around the, the ultis a little bit here. They've actually done a good job because I think instead of sitting back and, and letting that deficit that they were in uh, just increase, they've found themselves in a position where they've actually been taking the fight to Leviathan. Um, up until that last one, it was actually looking a lot better there. I think they brought it down to about 2k at, uh, at a stage, which was which was healthy and looking looking good for them. But the might maybe stabilize a bit saying let's not get involved in this ridiculous form of Dota. Let's play some real Dota, slow things down a bit, play to our ultis, play to our strengths. And obviously now we see that uh, they've, they've once again found themselves in a better position. Okay, let's have a quick look at the net worth right now. 5k in favor of Leviathan, around 9,000 up on BSJ, 8,300 up on uh, the Enchantress. And Jenkins literally has been playing Leroy Jenkins style, 11, 1 and 6. Yeah, it's been an up and down game, right? I mean, if, if you look at the, the actual XP graphs, uh, sorry, the, the gold graphs, well, you see that there's actually been a lot of like peaks that the Leviathan have got. So they, they had a couple of good showings of it. So, but oh, there was a charge here onto the Jakiro just as they smoked. So they actually know this. Check the entire team of Blue Pikachu. They're just on the retreat. They're running back as fast as possible. Yeah, you really want to take this fight. I mean, this is that weird conundrum you find yourself in, right? Because Leviathan have these big LTs. You don't want to fight into them, right? So you avoid them when they have the LTs. But then Leviathan gets well, the map. Well, has his ult or her ulti the whole time. That's the problem. And she is well, hitting like a truck. I, I mean, I, I hear you. And, and she's certainly been a, a force to be reckoned with in this game. She, Jenkins has played a 
pretty fantastic game, just applying pressure and then off lane position. Um, when you get that, when you get that much of an off laner, you really, with your team owes it to you to win, right? So the pressure's on Leviathan, but. But yeah, I mean, this is like the problem they find themselves in, that Leviathan can kind of walk around and like, get out of the fight. And they haven't really had much option to, other than to soak it up, so we'll see how they manage to defend on their high ground now. Well, the Lincoln's actually getting popped here onto the Faces Void. Faces Void backing up a little bit, keep in mind this time they do have a global silence to try and take this fight, but where is the lockdown coming through here from Blue Pikachu? That's what we spoke about during the drafting phase as well. And currently they can't really do anything up against the space as well. Here comes the charge and actually does get onto one here. Death, Death Prophet is gone upon and the global silence is there as well. Can they actually do enough to kill the Death Prophet though? Death Prophet's still alive and there you go. A big punish here. Just trapping of two heroes there for the side of Blue, Pik uh, of Blue Pikachu. But this Bird Breaker is going to be the first one to fall. And the amount of damage that's being pushed out here from Jenkins is just ridiculous. Double kill up here for Sammy Boy. Sammy Boy doesn't have his ulti anymore, but back up to full HP. And that's a 3 for 1 trade off. We spoke about Blue Pikachu actually needing to take control of this game early on and steamroll. Unfortunately, I think Leviathan heard that on stream and said, no, nope, they're going to be the ones that steamroll. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there were phases that looked pretty good, but I think we're reaching that point now. You're reaching the no return. Nice charge, though. Takes for 3. Actually, could bring down the DP here, but. Does get caught up by the time lock. Well, I'm going to have to sit for all nothing, actually. They're losing the other. Um, like I said, I'm just following Jenkins right now. Do you want to follow this group, Ricky, too? He's, he's well, in there. He's I can follow on there. Jenkins and just watch him destroy the Spirit Breaker. Oh no, one more hit needed. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. And this time, Jenkins might have bitten off a little bit more than he could chew, but there's no. Roy just yet here up here for the Beast Monster. He is going to blink for it, I think, in three seconds. Two, one, and get the roar. Or is this just pushing up a little bit too far? He does scout out Jenkins. There's the hawk coming through. And the roar. The roar hits as well as the charges. This is going to be a charge assist. Second death. Eighth kill streak ended. 735 gold going the, um, you know, going the way of the Pugna. So... I think this side of Leviathan, I mean, they were fighting all the way over here the whole time instead of just getting the racks. It's actually a really solid defense. I mean, you're fighting into an Aegis. Got it. Um, you know, once again, we've spoken about the, the, the big cooldown ult is all time available there. They, they walked into an Exorcism when they had to, and they just lost a tier 3 tile for it. So, uh, under the circumstances, they've done a very good job with that defense, and they actually picked up a couple of kills for their efforts as well. Uh, they're, they're still in a, a huge, huge hole. And I, I think they'd have to do, to know, like, like really just, uh, like, try to get the Viper back into that phase where they were fighting, you know, in these messy, scrappy team fights, as opposed to just allowing them to just barrel down lane and, and pick the fights for them. Because, you know, it, it's great. The that problem you is they don't have any map control. How can they push out? You know, how can the side of you know Blue Pikachu actually push out of their base? When in most cases Leviathan, they're just moving. They're just moving together. They can't get a pick off at all even when they try. Yeah, you see, that's one of the big things. Is that you can see that the, the face of Void, he's pretty happy to boat around by himself, because other than the, the Primal Roar, uh, there's not a huge amount that can lock him down and really cause a massive threat to Radiant um, And well, oh. Yeah, he's, I think his PSJ just really wants to go. He's got, oh, the Chronosphere catching out Pugna. And here comes Jenkins as well. Actually, it's going to be the Jakiro getting that kill. With the Pugna down, no buyback. Yeah, they'll be able to push fast, but Pugna, luckily, the side of Blue Pikachu, I actually know what they're doing right now. They're playing the local or, or the low death, the low death respawn timer strat. Okay, but what they really need to do now is that they know that they have, uh, by the time that the the Pugna respawns, about a minute to get something done. So what they need to do is hopefully smoke up immediately or find another way in where they can disrupt the pushes. Because even if you can just pick up one or two of their cores, um, Obviously, that, that in itself is a success, but the biggest thing is that it actually buys you a bit of time. Where the time leads, I'm not certain, right? Because, uh, sure, you have the likes of an Ectrophus that once he finishes up his Radiance, which isn't too far away from, uh, can be quite annoying to deal with. But you're still going late up against the likes of Faces Void and as well as Enchantress that is like really, really strong at this point. So, you buy time because it's your best bet. But, I mean, they do exactly oh. that. They smoke up. As usual, find, find we've been seeing this Aura just running in all the time, like going extremely deep. Trying to do a little bit of damage here up until the top, but here's the turnaround, and it's going to be Jenkins doing so much damage. He's just hitting him. Look how much damage he can actually output. 
The problem is there's been no global silence and here comes the Death Prophet. Ulti has been used and the Titans are not. Is there a Chronosphere up? No Chronosphere, but they don't need a Chronosphere. The Death Prophet just doing as much damage as they need to. Necro just gets instantly obliterated right now. And they want to go in for more kills. Save might be in a bit of trouble. He is being slowed up. Look at the amount of damage taking around just under a quarter HP from one attack. It only gets worse because there's a sort of big dagger coming out of the line. So yeah, there's a ice pot as well as a back fire. Keep that in mind. And the Pugna just dies, burns, and freezes all at the same time. And this is going to be yet another tier 3 tower going the way of Leviathan. They don't take towers as fast as they would like without the ulti up from the Death Prophet and a couple of keys from the enchanters, but they're okay with it. Yeah, I mean... They have a Jakiro. Yeah, they're... they're well, there's a the credit again. Yeah, you can take it. <laughs> you have to be quicker on that hype, man. I mean... I feel I like mean, it, was, I mean, it was quite... <laughs> I wouldn't say hypey that moment. I would say maybe more of an admin, you know. You know what I need hey, to do today? I need to send a couple of emails. Yeah. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe go go to the shop, buy myself some 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 uh, some lunch. Uh, don't forget your pets, right? Oh, and you know, complete the kill under that chronosphere. Oh, GG being called here right now. Just as you're busy talking about pets, and don't forget anyone. GGs. Let's see what happens in game number two here. Leviathan. To be honest, I know I missed like around four minutes of the game uh, when the internet went down, but. This just seemed to be Enchantress gaming. Sure, BSJ, I mean, he had free farm, he could do whatever he wanted, but it all came down to Enchantress, the start the Enchantress had, and everything the Enchantress just... Those weren't just normal attacks. Those were nukes on every single one of those attacks just throwing at, at the side of Blue Pikachu. I mean, I think that's a very fair...